What does that mean? What are our chances? Pretty much zero. The symbiote sensation is set to return in a thrilling third installment. After months of eager anticipation and a tantalizing mid credit scene in Spider-Man No Way Home, Tom Hardy's Eddie Brock and Venom are making a triumphant comeback in Venom 3. So, let's delve into the web of information and uncover everything we know about the upcoming Venom 3. After a long silence and almost a year since we first heard about it, Tom Hardy excitedly dropped some big news about Venom 3 on his Instagram. He told us that they're actively working on the sequel, and to make things even better, he gave us a taste of what's to come by sharing an old, previously unreleased scene from one of the earlier Venom movies. Tom Hardy has been pretty open about how he was working on the story for Venom 3 while they were shooting Venom Let There Be Carnage. However, he also made it clear that a third movie would only happen if the second one was a success. Then, back in December 2021, Amy Pascal, a producer at Sony, hinted that Venom 3 was in the early planning stages. But at that time, everyone's attention was focused on Spider-Man No Way Home. Thankfully, both Tom Hardy and Venom fans had something to celebrate because both Spider-Man No Way Home and Venom Let There Be Carnage were huge successes. Then, at the 2022 CinemaCom panel, Sony officially confirmed that Venom 3 is in the lineup for their upcoming films. So, it's safe to say that there's more Venom action on the horizon. Now, let's talk about the cast and crew of Venom 3. Tom Hardy, who wears many hats as the star, writer, and producer, is definitely coming back as Eddie Brock in Venom 3. As for Michelle Williams, even though her official casting hasn't been announced, she has expressed her interest in returning to the film series. She plays the role of Anne Weying, Eddie's ex fiance in both Venom and Venom Let There Be Carnage. Anne and Eddie may have split up, but they've remained friends, and she's one of the few people who knows about Eddie's alter ego. In fact, she even had a brief encounter with the symbiote in the first two Venom movies, which makes us wonder if she Venom might have a more significant role to play in the upcoming films. When it comes to other potential returning cast members from the franchise, we can expect familiar faces like Reed Scott, who plays Anne's fiancé Dan, and Peggy Lou, the scene stealer as the convenience store owner Mrs. Chen. They've been integral parts of the Venom story so far, and their return would make sense. But the real mystery lies with Stephen Graham, who portrays detective Patrick Mulligan. In the comics, Mulligan becomes the villain known as Toxin. In Venom Let There Be Carnage, we saw a hint of this transformation as Mulligan absorbed part of the symbiote at the end of the film. So it's safe to say there's a lot of curiosity around whether he'll take on a more antagonistic role in the sequel. Venom 3 is definitely shaking things up with the addition of two new cast members. Juno Temple and Chuidal Ejiofor are stepping into the franchise, and while we don't have all the details about their characters just yet, it's evident that they're going to be great additions to the lineup. Juno Temple, known for her role as Keeley Jones in Ted Lasso, has won over many with her performance. On the other hand, Chuidal Ejiofor has a wide range of experience, from serious roles in films like 12 Years a Slave to superhero movies, where he played Baron Mordo in the MCU. With their talent and track records, there's every reason to be excited about what they'll bring to the Venom universe in what might be the final chapter of the series. It's shaping up to be quite the ensemble. Surprisingly, Andy Serkis won't be in the director's chair for Venom 3, even though he did a great job with Venom Let There Be Carnage. He's got his hands full with an animated adaptation of George Orwell's Animal Farm, a project he's been involved with for a while. It seems like juggling both projects would be quite a task. But the good news is that Kelly Marcel, who wrote the scripts for the first two Venom movies, is stepping into the director's role. It's actually her directorial debut, which is pretty exciting. She's no stranger to the world of Venom, having penned the earlier films, so she's well equipped to ensure that Venom 3 carves its own path, while still honoring the established franchise. Change in direction, but still a promising one. Now, let's talk about what is going to happen in Venom 3. While we're still in the dark about the story specifics of Venom 3, there's been plenty of speculation. Some folks have taken cues from Spider-Man No Way Home and the comics as potential sources of inspiration. One interesting tidbit is that Venom 3 has been referred to as the final chapter. 
That suggests it could be the concluding installment, so we might see loose ends from the trilogy get wrapped up. In particular, fans are eager to see what happens with Eddie's relationship with Anne, as well as his connection with the Venom symbiote that he initially wasn't too thrilled about. The plot of Venom 3 is still under wraps, but there are some interesting hints and possibilities, especially with the events of Spider-Man No Way Home in mind. In that film, we saw villains from past Sony Spider-Man franchises, and any of them could potentially align with Venom's universe. It's even possible that characters like Green Goblin, Electro, or Dr. Octopus could find themselves in Eddie's world by mistake, as we've seen with Vulture in Morbius. Moreover, there's a wide array of Marvel characters that Tom Hardy's Venom could cross paths with. The Sony Spider-Man universe features characters like Morbius and Kraven, who could make for formidable adversaries or allies. Venom 3 might also introduce characters from the comics like Prowler, Null, or Black Cat, each of whom has a history of clashing with the symbiote. Recent hints about Venom 3 have stirred up even more intrigue, with Tom Hardy sharing an image from the movie set that shows him passionately reacting to graffiti of a dog or wolf. This image has sparked speculation that Eddie Brock might be facing off against the Lobo Cartel, a group of werewolves from Marvel Comics. On the other hand, there are also rumors circulating that Venom could be pitted against the jury, a team of vigilantes wearing supersuits who come together to try to take down the symbiote. All right, now let's dive into how Venom 3 can fit snugly into Sony's Spider-Man universe. It's actually quite a smooth fit. The Spider-Verse has been slowly unfolding, and you might recall the scene in Morbius after the credits, right? In that scene, the MCU's Vulture, played by Michael Keaton, finds himself in the Sony Spider-Man universe. He even drops a hint about teaming up with Morbius, played by Jared Leto, which strongly suggests the possibility of the Sinister Six. You know, those baddies who love to tangle with Spider-Man. Now, there's a chance we could see these characters pop up in Venom 3. Plus, we've got Kraven the Hunter coming into the mix with his own movie, and he could potentially join the Sinister Six lineup too. The burning question everyone's been asking is, when are we going to see Venom 3 on the big giant screens? Well, after a lot of back and forth and uncertainty, we finally have the answer. Venom 3 is set to hit theaters on July 11, 2024. That's a date to mark on your calendar. Interestingly, this means that Kraven the Hunter will make its debut before Venom 3, and this might just be a sign of a more tightly woven Sony Spider-Verse for Venom 3 to take full advantage of. And there you have it, all the exciting details and speculations about Venom 3 Anti-Venom. Do you think it will live up to the hype, and how do you envision it connecting to the larger Sony Spider-Verse? Share your thoughts in the comments below, and don't forget to like and subscribe for more updates on this highly anticipated film. Until next time, keep those spidey senses tingling!